Greetings medical students. Today, we will be diving into the fascinating world of gastroenterology, specifically focusing on the intricate topic of gastric volvulus. Gastric volvulus refers to the abnormal twisting or rotation of the stomach, which can result in a range of symptoms and complications. In this comprehensive lecture, we will explore the anatomy and physiology of the stomach, types of gastric volvulus, etiology and risk factors, pathophysiology, clinical presentation, diagnostic techniques, management options, complications, differential diagnosis, the significance of patient history and physical examination, surgical intervention, postoperative care, and appropriate follow-up. So, fasten your seatbelts and get ready for an informative and enlightening session on gastric volvulus. The stomach is a complex organ with divisions into regions, attachments to stabilize it, blood supply via the celiac artery, and innervation from the vagus nerve and celiac plexus. These details are important for understanding gastric volvulus. In this section, we will discuss the two types of gastric volvulus, organoaxial and mesenteroaxial volvulus. Organoaxial volvulus involves a twist along the long axis of the stomach, while mesenteroaxial volvulus occurs along a perpendicular axis. Differentiating between these types is important for diagnosis and management. Organoaxial volvulus is associated with diaphragmatic abnormalities and often causes gastric outlet obstruction, while mesenteroaxial volvulus is usually seen in patients with lax gastric ligaments and can have traumatic or congenital causes. Understanding these differences helps in designing tailored treatment approaches for patients. Gastric volvulus can be caused by diaphragmatic abnormalities like hiatal hernias and eventration. Ligament laxity, traumatic events, and certain congenital malformations also play a role. Recognizing these factors is important for prevention and treatment. Gastric volvulus occurs when the stomach twists, causing obstruction and compromised blood flow. This can lead to ischemia and infarction of the stomach tissue, highlighting the need for early diagnosis and intervention. Identification of the characteristic symptoms and clinical presentation is crucial for suspected cases of gastric volvulus. Patients often present with nausea, vomiting, dysphagia, difficulty swallowing, and epigastric pain. The dysphagia arises due to the mechanical obstruction caused by the volvulus, hindering the normal transit of food from the esophagus into the stomach. Additionally, chest pain may occur as a result of the stomach's abnormal position and pressure on adjacent structures, leading to symptoms that mimic cardiac distress. Recognizing these symptoms in clinical practice helps narrow down the differential diagnosis of gastric volvulus and aids in initiating appropriate diagnostic investigations. For diagnosing gastric volvulus, the upper gastrointestinal series, upper endoscopy, CT scans, and abdominal x-rays are used. These tests help visualize the stomach, identify abnormalities, assess complications, and rule out other conditions, aiding in informed treatment decisions. The management of gastric volvulus involves nonoperative reduction techniques for partial volvulus and surgical intervention for complete cases. Nonoperative techniques involve manually rotating the stomach, while surgery depends on the patient's condition and surgeon's experience. A multidisciplinary approach is crucial for optimal outcomes. Gastric volvulus can lead to a myriad of complications, necessitating prompt diagnosis and intervention. The compromised blood flow resulting from torsion can progress to gastric ischemia, compromising the vitality of the stomach tissue. If left untreated, this can progress to necrosis, potentially resulting in perforation and peritonitis. Recurrence of gastric volvulus is also a concern, especially if underlying risk factors, such as diaphragmatic abnormalities or gastric ligament laxity, remain unaddressed. Close monitoring and ongoing management are essential to mitigate the risk of volvulus recurrence and prevent associated complications. Differentiating gastric volvulus from gastric outlet obstruction, gastroesophageal reflux disease, and peptic ulcer disease is crucial. Careful history taking, examination, and diagnostic techniques aid in accurate diagnosis and appropriate management, preventing unnecessary interventions. Taking a meticulous patient history and conducting a comprehensive physical examination are crucial steps in the diagnosis of gastric volvulus. Patients presenting with a history of recurrent episodes of abdominal pain, vomiting with associated difficulty swallowing, or previously diagnosed diaphragmatic abnormalities warrant further investigation for gastric volvulus. During the physical examination, signs such as an abnormal position of the stomach, empty gastric bubble, or a succussion splash may be indicative of volvulus. Additionally, evaluating for risk factors associated with gastric volvulus, such as hiatal hernias or trauma history, guides the diagnostic process. Accurate risk assessment and clinical evaluation aid in formulating a differential diagnosis and selecting appropriate diagnostic investigations. In complicated cases of gastric volvulus, emergency surgery may be necessary. 
The choice between laparoscopy and laparotomy depends on factors such as patient stability and surgeon preference. Surgical techniques include detorsion, repair of diaphragmatic defects, and gastropexy. Postoperative care and appropriate follow-up are crucial in gastric volvulus cases. Nutritional support, monitoring for complications, and long-term management strategies are important to ensure successful recovery and reduce complications, including close monitoring and nutritional assessment. Regular follow-ups and imaging help detect recurrence. In conclusion, gastric volvulus is a complex condition with a range of symptoms. It is important for future gastroenterologists to have a comprehensive understanding of its anatomy, causes, diagnostic techniques, and management in order to provide optimal patient care.